We welcome you back to CBS Mornings. As we reported earlier, WNBA superstar Brittany Griner has reached out directly to President Biden with a handwritten note asking him not to forget her while she's being held in Russia. Griner is scheduled to make another court appearance in a Moscow suburb on Thursday where Russian authorities claim that she had cannabis oil in her luggage. The U.S. says she's wrongfully detained. According to a representative, the basketball superstar tells President Biden in the letter, quote, as I sit here in a Russian prison alone with my thoughts and without the protection of my wife, my family, friends, Olympic jersey or any accomplishments, I'm terrified I might be here forever. Brittany's wife, Sherelle, joins us now to discuss the letter. Sherelle Griner, we thank you. It's really good to see you. When I hear the words that Brittany says, I'm terrified I might be here forever, what goes through your mind when you hear her say that? Thank you for having me, Gail. And um, it breaks my heart when I hear her say that because BG is probably the strongest person that I know. So she doesn't say words like that um, lightly. That means she truly is terrified um, that she may never see us again. And, you know, I share those same sentiments. Yeah. Why did she decide, Sherelle, to write to the president directly? Um, because I haven't been able to speak to her, you know, real time, I don't necessarily know, but I know my wife really well. So I feel confident in saying that I think the decision for her to feel the need to directly reach out to President Biden is because of the failed attempts that we have had as a family. You know, she's there and she knows that we are doing everything that we can in our own strength to, you know, ask to meet with the president and to, you know, request that, you know, they do everything they can to get her home. And it kills me every time that, you know, when I have to write her and she's asking, you know, have you met with him yet? And, you know, I have to say no. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you know what? I'm sure she's like, I'm going to write him an ass now because, mm -hmm. you know, my family has tried and, and, and to no avail. So I'm going to do it myself. Why did she decide on the 4th of July? I thought that was an interesting choice. Um, you know, I would have to say that, you know, it's probably because BG, she, she cherishes the 4th of July. Um, her dad was in the Vietnam War. Um, you know, she's an Olympian. Yeah, we were sent pictures. Could so, we put up you know... pictures? Hold on a second, Cheryl. <laughs> we were sent pictures of her dad. That's her dad on the right. But you said her dad was served in the Vietnam War. Go ahead. He did. He did. And so BG literally, you know, loves that. And so she she cherishes this holiday. And so um, she 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 uses it as a day, you know, to honor his service and freedom. Um, and so I know that it was it is killing her, you know, that she wasn't able to, you know, do her annual fireworks show and, you know, put chairs out in the lawn for all of us mm -hmm. to sit down and, you know, really to just, you know, give him the respect due. Um, because honestly, she tells everybody, if I wasn't a basketball player, you know, I would join the the military and my sister's in the military. And she's, she tells BG all the time, you're too tall. We wouldn't take you. Yeah. <laughs> and BG yeah, yeah, gets upset. Yeah. She's like, seriously? She is tall, Sherelle. She is tall. She's six eight. Yeah. You know, when 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 you read the charges, it says she's been charged with large scale transportation of drugs, an offense that could carry a sentence of up to ten years behind bars. When you heard that, that's what she was charged with. What did you think when you heard that, knowing her the way that you do? You know, um, it blew my mind because I'm like large scale. I mean, I'm. I live with BG every day, so I'm like, there's no way possible. Um, so I, I, I knew it wasn't true the minute that I heard the charge because I know my wife. I'm like, no. Um, and so um, it just is very unfortunate, you know, that she's in this position because BG does not large scale do anything um, in, mm -hmm. in traffic of drugs. And so it was just very, very disheartening to, to hear that charge. Yeah, there was one video, Sherelle, that I found very jarring. It seemed like like Brittany was either very afraid or had been startled. And I'm wondering when you saw the picture, too, what, yeah, that's the picture. That's the picture I was thinking of, guys. When you saw that, what did you think? What is happening here? Um, you must be referring to when she uh, went to court on Monday, that picture. And her um, eyes are sort of and, bugged out, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. 
it terrified me. I'm like, what mm -hmm. is happening to my wife? Like, you know, just the humanity element of it. And I, I honestly wrote her and I'm like, hey, honey, you know, um, I saw a picture of you and I know there's a such thing as propaganda. I'm like, but I have to ask. I'm inclined to ask. I'm like, are you okay? You know, like, are you insane at this point? And, you know, I told mm. her, I said, understand that if you are, I still love you. And that when you come back, we will love you back whole, show yourself grace. Um, I was like, but you know, if you're not, you know, insane, I said, could you please, you know, help me, my conscience and, you know, kind of just tell me, you know, some more context about the picture. And that's when she told me, she said, I, I am weak right now, she said. And, and, and I was very weak at that moment, but she was like, yeah. I promise I'm not insane. Not yet, she said, but I was startled yeah. because I turned the corner and it was like hundreds of uh, media just sitting there oh, with cameras okay. and things waiting. And, and so she was shocked. How often do you get to talk to her or, or communicate with her? Because I know you haven't physically talked to her, right? Correct. I have not physically talked to her. I had the, the chance about four and a half months in. Um, we finally got a phone call approved, and unfortunately, our government, you know, uh, made a mistake um, in yeah. not answering her phone calls. And so I haven't been able to talk to her yet. And the letters, I mean, you know, they may be consistent as in I'll hear something, you know, every week. And, you know, sometimes I may not. I think at one point it, went, it was a whole month before I received one letter from her. Yeah. And when has I did there, get has, a, um, they were backdated. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's very difficult to hear this conversation. Do you, has there been a, a change in strategy on how you all are pushing the government for her release? Do you, are there calculations yes. that you make yourself about what to say and how to say? What is that? What is your thinking? So that's a good question. So um, everything about this is a calculation for me because I have to walk the fine line of, you know, harm versus help when it comes mm. to my wife right now. So as much as I want to, you know, um, advocate for her and push for, you know, our government to do everything, you know, I also have to take into account that she's in a position where she could be harmed um, mm -hmm. also. Um, by any and everything I do. And so um, it's, a, it's a thin line to walk in initially. You know, I was told, you know, just we're going to try and reserve, you know, we're going to try and handle this behind scenes and, you know, let's not raise her value and, you know, stay quiet. And, you know, I did that. And, and, and respectfully, we're, we're over 140 days at this point. That does not work. And so I will not be quiet anymore. Um, I will find that balance of, you know, harm versus help in pushing our government to do everything that's possible because being quiet, they are not moving. They are not doing anything. And so, um, my wife is struggling, and, and we have to help her. Sheryl, a lot of us feel the same way that you do. We all want her home sooner rather than later. Have, before you go, have you heard from the White House since the letter was delivered to President Biden? In her letter, she says the first time she voted was in 2020, and that vote was for President Biden. Have you heard from him? I still have not heard from him, and honestly, um, it's very disheartening. All right, Sherelle Griner, thank you so much for your time. We, of course, will stay on this story and would certainly like to talk to you and Brittany together. Thank you so much for your time this morning. <laughs>